optical isomers, again, a subset of stereoisomers. There's two subsets, the geometric and the optical. For the optical, what it means is there is a non-superimposable mirror image. Again, you're going to see this in OCHEM and bio because a lot of biomolecules in our bodies are optical isomers. Okay, what does that mean? Take a look at your hand, your hand, your right hand, and your left hand. They are mirror images of each other. Okay, but they are not what's called superimposable. You can't take your right hand and impose it on your left. There's no way. You could do this, but you got your palms on the wrong sides. Okay, so these are non-superimposable mirror images. You can have superimposable mirror images, like my right hand, right hand, to your right hand, would be kind of superimposable images. They might not be mirrors. Uh, other mirror images like uh, that are superimposable, like one coin to another coin. They could be mirror images, but they're imposable. So optical isomers is when they're not imposable, meaning you have two, they look exactly the same in the mirror, but when you try to put them together, they're not imposable. So there's a handedness. There's right-handed and left-handed molecules. Or you might have heard of like D and L sugars. D and L sugars are this handedness thing. So there's right and left-handed sugars, everything. They're, they're all over the place. All kinds of biomolecules are right and left-handed. So that's what an optical isomer is. We call these uh, chiral, so there's a couple of names you want to, terms you want to be familiar with, chiral and uh, enantiomers. Okay, let me show you how to use these terms. Chiral, if I have two non-superimposable mirror images, my, then my right hand is chiral and my left hand is chiral, okay? So they're both chiral. Uh, that's just a term to refer to one of them. Uh, enantiomers is another term that refers to both of, both of them. So my right hand and my left hand are enantiomers of each other. It's kind of another way of saying optical isomers. Okay, but you know, a common term is enantiomers. Why these terms are helpful? Chiral molecules or optical isomers <coughs> Uh, one characteristic of them is they rotate light. So right-handed molecules will rotate polarized light in one direction. Left-handed molecules will rotate light in another direction. So this is one common characteristic of them. Uh, enzymes commonly will be either right or left-handed. And so they'll be able to uh, appropriately catalyze a reaction where, let's say, a right-handed enzyme will catalyze a reaction where the left-handed enzyme, even though it looks really similar, like your right and left hand do, that might not be able to catalyze that same reaction. So chirality, or something being chiral, is significant. So we want to be able to determine, is something chiral? So let's take a look at this. Stereoisomer is really an optical isomer. Here it's saying, does this molecule have an optical isomer or a non-superimposable mirror image? I'd encourage you to draw this down, or draw this. And what we do to find out, does it have an optical isomer, we draw this right here. This is our mirror. So the vertical line here is our mirror. What we're going to do is try to draw the mirror image. You can try to do that now if you'd like. If you're not sure how to do that, I will unveil momentarily here. So we want to try to draw the mirror image. I will unveil. Here is the mirror image. You can kind of see through this. That's unfortunate. There. Okay. So you draw the mirror image. And what you have to ask yourself is, are these two superimposable? Or are they uh, the same thing? And uh, you think about that for a second uh, while I try to make a little uh, molecule for you that you can kind of take a look at and uh, figure out for yourself. Okay, 
So, um, these are not the same thing. And I'll have, probably have to show you with a model. So, yes, it does have an optical isomer. They are chiral. Okay, let me show you why. Uh, so, if you try to rotate this around in space, however you want to do it, it would not be this. These are different, just like your right hand and your left hand are different. Uh, it's going to be hard for some of you to imagine this, but let me do the best I can here. Okay, so I'm going to move this for a moment. Uh, we'll dim the lights and I'll show you a little model set. And if you want to get yourself a model set, you'll probably use it in OCHEM anyways. So it can be helpful down the road if you're taking that class. Okay, take a look at these two. Uh, and let me get them kind of in the same arrangement here. There we go. Uh, so we've got these blacks here, ligands. We've got the two reds, the two blues, and the two whites on top. So I made them as mirror images of each other right now. So hopefully you can kind of see, just like the other molecule, they're mirror images. The black ones are the Bs. Okay, the black ones are the Bs uh, from the previous drawing. If I try to rotate this in space to make it just like the other one, you'll see I will never be able to get all the colors to line up perfectly. You say, oh, I could just flip it. Well, if I just flip it, I can make those two line up, but my white and my black are not lined up. There is no way I'm going to spin this in space so that they are all lined up with each other. It's just impossible. So these are non-superimposable mirror images. They are chiral. They are both called enantiomers of each other. And they're optical isomers of each other, to use all the terms. So each one of these molecules are chiral. They're enantiomers. Uh, and they're optical isomers. They're not superimposable. Now, for those of you who are not uh, visual. How the heck do you figure this out? Uh, well, one, that's the ideal way. If you can visualize it, spin it in your mind or redraw it, that's the ideal way to do this. If you can't do that, I'll give you a couple rules of thumb. Is this, are the B's cis, trans, fat, or mer? The B ligands. They're fat. Can you see that? They're fat. Whenever you have octahedral with a FAC, and the other ligands are all different, so A, C, and D are different than B, it will always be chiral. So if you have FAC, and the other ligands are different, it will always be chiral. If it is mer, it's never going to be chiral. So mer is not chiral, trans is not chiral. Cis and FAC could be chiral. In this case, uh, fact is, gonna, is chiral here because all the other ligands are different. 